How's it going, everybody? It's me, Shane, and I'm here to give you another Bleach Thousand Year Blood War episode review. Recap today's episode is episode six, The Fire. The episode that pretty much everybody's been waiting on. So, before I go any further, please do not forget to hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell right next to that subscribe button so you can be notified of more videos just like this one. Boy, oh boy, this is is a bit of a doozy here. And I've been contemplating. <clears throat> I've been contemplating doing these videos differently, especially since my setup has to currently change until uh, some of my equipment's fixed. But I don't know how. <sighs> I don't know how I want to explain this. Do I really want to go bit by bit? Who knows? We're gonna wing it this time. Yes, that's right. The fire has me winging it, and this episode is beautiful, Mike. When you think of anime, what episodes of any particular show do you think of? Like for me, when I think of great anime, especially when it comes to the fights and how everything looks, I think of this episode. I think of the fight with um, Tenzin, Tenzin and the boys versus uh, Gyuki and his sister from last season of uh, Demon Slayer. When I think of really great animation, I think of like the super brilliant movie when i think of good animation in an episodic form <sighs> everything from cowboy bebop the fight um and samurai shampoo with mugen mugen and jen versus the blind um blind strings player lady like that type of stuff. Granted, this is shonen. So when you think of shonen it's hard to pinpoint some things. Personally, i think of like Dragon Ball Z Z, or you can even go to the Jiren versus Goku fight if you're looking for something a little bit more current. What what fight in my hero? My hero, when you're talking about the school, like the school, the first school tournament with uh, Midoriya versus Todoroki, like really good quality, really cool stuff. Sound quality is great as well because this man melts the ground and you could just hear the. You just hear all of that. So, uh, go back up to no ten, 10 page worth of notes. So, man, the uh, one of the eye catches, or should I say, the transition from the um, theme, the intro, until the episode was showing three of our captains being inspired by the pillar of flame that is Captain Yama Yamamoto. Which was uh, Hetsugaya, Soifon, and Komamaru. And the, you know, latter two were smiling. Because they're like, yeah, this is about to, it's about to go down. Uh, we do open up to Uryu reading more pages from the book. He's underneath an overpass. And um, two pages are stuck together. LOL. And once he looks through it, it says, The Quincy extermination of a thousand years ago. And he's like, wait a minute. I thought it was 200 years ago. Like he was told. And a picture of it. The picture in there is a picture of the old man Yamato when he was younger, like we saw last episode. Um, and now he's facing your watch, who's choking uh, Kimpachi, which, given the revelation at the end of this episode, kind of pisses me off now. So, um, the title comes up with a crackle of flame with the fire. And, um, you know, as he steps, he's radiating flames. Like, holy shit. That's that's hot, right? Ooh, here I am. He's radiating fire. So he instantly took Kimpachi away from the battle. And he's telling Yawach, yeah, he, even Yawach couldn't detect how fast he was going. And as the flames are dying down, as he's speaking, somebody has been a long time. It's been a thousand years. I've And here's one of here's one of the quotes that contenders for quote of the show. It's been a thousand years, Yawach. I've come to put it into your life. That actually just might win. I liked some of the other ones, but that's in, conten in contention right there. And um, what is it? Um, the guy who sends we cuts says it's good. You know, uh, it's funny because he says you misjudge. You know, you think that you're you guys are spirits are the only ones that's been lifted. You know, your boss is going to lose to ours. And then you see three guys jumping down. Three stern rooters jumping down, trying to kill uh, Yamato. 
And that's when the f- pillar of flame goes up. He burns them instantly to ash. <clears throat> Since he goes, yeah, indeed, someone did misjudge. And he's smirking. Uh, your conventions don't come apply to old, ye- old man Yamato. And they don't. It's, it's man. I wish I reviewed the manga when this when this chapter when these chapters have first occurred because I got some feelings on this. So you know, and this is the gun stern Ritter guy talking to Shinsui after he took one of his eyes. <clears throat> and of course, you hear fools. That's what you get for interfering in my battle. I'm like, damn, you watch. So Yamoto cracks his neck. Cranks his arms, he, and he's and uh, he says, uh, "You look like you want to say." Before he say say anything past that, he slashes and just the flames cut into his arm. Dude's blood is burning as it hits the ground, and you haven't changed one bit. You watch, but know that your habit of selling your subordinates short will end here. And we get an image of both of them in the past. One of them is you watch standing on a pile of his dead comrades looking on at you know young old man Yamamoto <clears throat> and uh, he's you know he talks about oh, you've grown old Shinguki Shinginkuni Yamamoto however seeing your race take you over reminds me of when you were younger and again we get we're gonna constantly get juxtapositions of the past and the future and the present <clears throat> so <laughs> he says Hey, he goes nonsense. Now, this is he just they're going into fighting this slashing and dodging. And uh, he uh, was a you ends up kicking him. But they're up on the rooftop. And dude, you watch just throws tiles at him. Tiles, tiles at him. And his shout alone alone burns them and sets them on fire. Um. And as they go back down to the ground, he's instantly behind him, swinging his sword with an upward slash. And just the flames is just covering him and, um, you know, flames coating all of Yamamoto. And you watch brings his blade out from his little pendant to slice the flames in half and to see a fire everywhere. And the blonde one the, who might as well be his ace, this Jack jerk jackass you know he kind of breaks in himself and Yamamoto tells him you know you finally all right you've drawn it good he's like you talk as if you've been waiting for me to draw my sword do you know why I was waiting your flesh is contention contender number two for quote of the day is your flesh blood sword and soul I intend to crush all of it until there's nothing left I kind of like the other one a little bit more when he talks about, you know, ending his, you know, his life's going to end here. But this is pretty good. And um, the flames, all the flames just cease at one time. And we see tons of dead uh, soul reapers, Shimigami, spirit reapers, still Shimigami. They say Shimigami a lot, literally, in here. I think it's kind of weird that. In the West, we we said Shin Megami, but then we translated. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that last week. Anyway, uh, we have Junsuke. I think that's that's how you, that's how you say his name. The one that's literally was raised with Shun uh, Shun Sweet underneath old man Yamamoto. He's like, man, my throat feels dry. It looks like just a bright sunny day, and there's blood on Shun on uh, Shun Sweet's lips. And he's like, damn, my lips cracked, and you can see what's going on now. So squad four, the lieutenant there says, you know, Unahana san does, you know, my skin kind of feels like it's getting dry. She tells her, oh, that's cute that you're worrying about your skin at a time like this. And she's like, no, no. And she's looking very serious. In the coming episodes, you will find out why people are afraid of Unahana. But she's looking out and she's looking at a flower in a vase. And she's like, please settle this quickly before your power itself destroys soul society. And the, the vase cracks. Ice, the ice wings that the uh, Stern Ritter stole from Heads a guy. He's like, you can't even use that anymore. Can't tell me you know it's all the moisture and soul society is evaporating. Everyone is recognizing what's going on. Yamamoto does his bankai. Zanka Notachi. 
His blade is burned to a crisp. Looks like a burnt sword. And the blonde dude says, his scorched little sword is his bankai. And your wife tells him, don't under- underestimate him. Zanka no Tachi seals all of his flames in that single blade. One swing and it's all over. Everything will be scorched and burnt by explosive flames. It is a sword of hellfire. And he's like, oh yeah, you did see this a thousand years ago, haven't you? Are you sure about that, though? Are you sure for yourself that it's the same as it was a thousand years ago? And when he moves, there's a trail of fire. Like, as if he was the Back to the Future DeLorean trail of flames. And he swings, cuts his, you know, cuts dude's uh, shirt. He's like, there's no fire. And, you know, he disappeared and slams down the sword. And the tip of it makes everything in front of it in a cone shape just explode into nothing. And he's like, oh, wow, all of it's in the tip. And he's like, correct. There's a joke in there somewhere. And um, animation, I already said animation is amazing. And he calls it uh, Zanka no Tachi. Where, oh, I lost my, lost my point. Zanka no Tachi East, the Kyoku Jitsujin. Uh, he forces all the heat in his blade just to the tip of it. And it doesn't burn or emit explosive flames. It just obliterates everything it touches into nothing. And so, and do uh, and what you watch goes. Oh, that's perfect because that means I just have to slice you without getting cut by my, by your blade. And he goes for a slice, but his blade is already broken from the handle and the handguard already broken. <laughs> and, he's, and Yamoto says a thousand years ago, all of you died. <clears throat> oh, there we go. And we just see red and blue flames from the past of the both of them actually, you know, facing each other and fighting. And he says, today I'm going to force you to remember all of that. And all of you are nothing but a horde of corpses. So the flames are starting to swirl around him, almost like when he first appeared. But it's more massive. It's it's more fiery. And he's about to tell him about the West. It's not just an the East. There's a West. Zanka no Tachi West. Who? Zan Jitsu Goki. Goku, Gokui. Sorry. Apparently, it is 15 million degrees Celsius. Not Fahrenheit. Celsius. Just straight heat. And, you know, he sees his younger. You know, we see him as his younger self with the flames all around him. And his body is melting the very ground he's standing on. That's why I meant early with the tick, tick sound. It sounds. I, I, their sound people deserve something because that was that's some really good sound. And the blind guy's like, there's no way this intense heat would be from just flames. Is it an illusion? Wait, or maybe his spiritual pressure is so overwhelming that it looks like flames are bursting out of him. And. Um, yeah, old man Yamamoto sighs and says, you know, I need to end this soon because if I don't, me and Soul Side are going to burn to ashes. So, melts the ground as he walk in. The fire, like, the stuff around him is turning to ash. And the actual flower in the flower pot, hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of yards away at the squad four barracks, bursts into ash. And so he's moving in. Like, I guess he's using the flames to propel himself forward. And we go back to Uryu reading the book, talking about the Lich, the Lich Reich, which means the light, whatever Reich means, it means light Reich. Um, <clears throat> they intended to annihilate all hollows, and then they invaded the Soul Society. I'm so surprised that this manual, this Quincy manual, admits that they are the ones who invaded Soul Society to go against the Spirit Reapers who opposed them, and the 13 squads beat them. And then 200 years, uh, you know, after that, 200 years ago, Soul Reapers went in to exterminate the last of the Quincy, so nothing would disrupt the circulation of souls. So... The 200 year thing was correct. It's just different. It's just different than how you initially uh, knew it. And then he thinks, I guess, no matter how much we try, Shin Megami, Soul Reapers, and uh, Quincy's will never get along. He gets flashbacks of him and his teacher and him having a conversation with Ichigo, you know, talking about, you know, you're not even real Soul Reaper, you're a sub, and these guys, the Soul Society, have already abandoned him. And then the convo from, I think, episode two or three. 
I think it was three when they're going into Hueco Mundo where he tells him, you know, I get that you can't go in there. You're Quincy, right? And you can see uh, Uryu kind of biting his lip just thinking about everything. And back on the battlefield, your watch feels like he's burning, saying if it wasn't for his the ability Bloot, he would have turned to ash from this distance. So... Yamamoto goes, are you just going to stand there and watch? Like, that's a spiteful question. Your sword's broken. There is nothing you can do. Here's number three of a uh, contender for quote of the episode. I don't blame you for not being able to move. You can run if you like, except I'd quickly catch up and kill you. Still think the first line, the very first line is pretty good. This, I think, is better than number two, but this just... I like the emotion invoked behind it and the, the whole entire moment he's saying he's just shouting it like, I'm, I'm going to get you, bro. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, old Mr. Yawai just starts sending big blue arrows. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Your sword's broken. So you're going to start using your arrows. We get flashback of the past. And it's as if it's as if your watch's back is to his as we transition into the past where he's using those arrows. Flies right at him and dude does uh you watch know, does the Kirchen Lind. I do not speak German, so if I'm messing this up, I don't like I don't like the Quincy's because they're they're stormtroopers, so F them. Uh Zonk Zweiger. I know I said that right. And there's a blue area around him and he just tons of Quincy crosses are up and he says this is the ultimate defensive incantation and often the uh, ultimate defensive incantation of the Quincy's is for offense and defense. The moment he steps in, he'll be torn apart by God's light. I kind of like the move. The move is kind of cool. I and mean, he told him you cannot harm me. He stops short of the move, puts his sword in the ground and says the ashes of those who have perished by my flame. Give me a hand. I'll give you a moment of joy in the battle. It's the South. And this name is absurdly long. Kakajuman Kokushi Dai Shoujin. Damn, I did it in the first try. The ground is broken, shifted, and just burnt skeletons are coming out. These, indeed, are the Quincy's that Yamamoto has killed a thousand years ago. And probably once he just killed a moment ago. And they're they're coming up on on onto your watch. They're grabbing onto him. He's like, yeah. He's starting to recognize some of the faces. And he's like, oh yeah, these are your comrades that, um, <clears throat> these are comrades that you remember your old subordinates. As I try to find my spot again, and they make their way towards your watch with burnt, broken swords in their hands, and. <laughs> You know, he says, hey, you know, you can't beat me like this. And when you watch says, he laughs and says, you know, uh, he says, you can't beat me like this. And he's kind of going like, oh, man, spirit, soul reapers awakening the dead. And he leaps at Yamamoto. But the skeletons make literally a bone shield like they just climb up and block it. And Yamamoto, I love this. This is another good quote. I actually like this one the most. Your mouth works well, but your eyes don't work at all. I might actually steal that for regular day-to-day -day stuff. <clears throat> and this is when he sees his men all around him. And you see the subordinates I slain before you? Do you, you regret not stealing my Bankai before I could use it? Oh, it's not that. It's not that. You couldn't. Your people still Bankai by, you know, learning it and then understanding its power. And we get flashes of my guy Biakia getting his Bankai stolen. <sighs> so he's saying that, you know, <clears throat> you couldn't steal it even if you wanted to. And he's like, am I wrong? I, and he, he says, am I wrong? You know, I haven't shown my true power in over a thousand years. You simply just can't steal it. And he's walking away. He said, if you want to defeat me, come on and beat me. You just got to get through your subordinates. And he yells out. And Yamamoto goes, oh, so you do have a shred of humanity left. Because he's remorseful. He has to literally beat up the dead bodies of his calm, of his old subordinates. And he's like, don't talk as if you know me. Hint number two. It's been a couple of hints after I just realized. Just bear with me. 
Don't talk to me as if you know, you know, you know me. You know, this isn't going to stop me. He's tearing through the bodies and he says, I can see your tears. And he has bloody tears run down his face. And, you know, you're shifting between present and past. And <clears throat> uh, you hate me this much for bringing back your dead comrades. But nothing you feel can compare to the hatred and suffering of the soul reapers that you've killed. His flames come back and he does the north. <clears throat> Zanku Tachi North. And if I can get this name right, oops, if I can get this name right, guys, uh, Tenchi Kaijin just blows it all the way with one attack and it has a hole in the side of him. It reminds me of when Cell got hit by the final flash and much like that, it's going to be disappointing. So he gets, he falls to the ground. And then he starts saying, I'm sorry, I failed you. And he's like, he's the boss. Who's the boss apologizing to? And once he realizes, he goes, who are you? Turns out it's a different body. And here, walking from behind from behind him, the squad one barracks are destroyed. He thinks of the one comrade that's actually still there. And he goes, oh, no. And here comes your watch. The guy was apologizing to your watch. <sighs> Stern Ritter, why the Rory, Rory, whoever gives, who gives a damn? You know, he told him, well done. And he literally just kills the guy. He finishes the boink. Only thing that's left was the leg, the boot, his leg and his boot. And he says, so what's beneath, you know, the barracks of squad one? He's like, so scared Eisen. He went and met with Eisen. As a matter of fact, when he went down to meet with Eisen, who is contained, and I'm going to put in a little thing here. I don't know why people consider Eisen the greatest, one of the greatest villains, because all he did was use his power and then trick everybody to make himself not be known. And then he went and grabbed Hollows to make them do whatever he wants. You will feel at the end of this that you watch is the, the greater enemy. I do I do like the tra the transition, you know, from... Ichigo learning, then we go, oh no, he gotta save Rukia. Like, why are they trying to kill one of their own? There's like, oh yeah, Aizen put this plot together because he's an asshole. And then the next arc leads into another bigger war, which I like that. I really felt like you could have ended the show with Hueco Mundo. You really could have ended the show on the manga with Hueco Mundo with tons of questions left, but still. So anyway, he met with Aizen. Aizen was like yeah based on spiritual pressure above he knows what's going on so why are you here as he is captured in this thing called the heel goku he says special threat aizen i'm here to ask you to join me in my ranks we follow the same path we want to end soul society he's like follow the same path hmm i refuse what? Yeah, I cannot stand to see the Quincy following the same footsteps of the Soul Reapers, Shimigamis. Yeah, so he's like, is that your answer? All right, we're done talking. He goes to leave and then Aizen goes, my power's a threat though, right? Oh yeah, it is. But you refuse to heal to the heal Goku, so it's going to take too long to kill you. And just to take you out and restrain you, it's going to take as long as well. And he's like, wise decision. You don't want to waste time with me. You know, on the same path, if you're going out, you got someone else you need to kill, right? Or you need to eliminate. And now that he's ex he's exhausted his power, he uses the thing to steal Yamamoto's Bankai. He goes, it's not that we couldn't steal it. It's just the only person who has the ability to use it and not, you know, hurt themselves is me. <sighs> As Yamamoto tries to use his Bankai, it is stolen. The jackass has this giant bow that shoots a sword into the ground. It looks very cool. Yes. And he pulls out the blade and he tells him farewell and slashes him. And the last thing we rips through his shoulder. We see that. But we see that after the spurt of blood that's just constantly on the, on the screen here. And now we're back to the hopeless feeling. Um, Bianca does the poetry reading this evening with a petal falling never to bloom again. A petal on flames, full of beauty. Next episode is Born in the Dark. Man, we went from, yay, we can do this to, oh man, we're going to die again. And here's a funny thing. I, I knew this was going to happen because I remember seeing um, 
the Bond Kai, but I, I won't. I don't remember. I don't. I, 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 I just gonna come out and say I remember seeing your wife she use it. So I, maybe I was misremembering thinking he took it here, but this is that kind of Naraku shit. I get it. I get it. They did such a great job of making you hate Naraku because he kept running like a little bitch. This here pisses me off. It's like, oh, literally, I don't care who you are. And my favorite character is Byakuya. This is literally the strongest Bankai in Soul Society. Literally strongest. Four different forms. I love that. Um, the ending f picture here was him. But I love it. I love how I, I I like how they go. It, it's basically, hey, we got to show this guy's Bankai. People are going to be like, oh, what is it? So if there's a north, there's an east, there's a south, there's a west. But really, he used up all his power because he was so enraged to go and show all his stuff and toy with them. When it's such a Vegeta thing, it's such an early Vegeta thing to do. That's why I said much like the cell part. It's, it's just as useless and mm, frustrating. Very frustrating. Oh, boy. I hope next episode Ichigo is able to break through because mm, it's fun not remembering some of this stuff. But boy, oh, boy, with this being so frustrating, uh, it makes me it makes me want to just go lower but it's 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 a good episode the animation alone would make this a five but i'm gonna give it maybe a four just because bleach you've done so many fake outs you did the eisen fake out uh you did the kaname fake out then you did the gen fake out you've there's probably several other fake outs the, the full bringer stuff which was you didn't need to do full bringers that was just a waste but anyway Sorry, Kubo. Fullbringers was a waste. But anyway. <sighs> Four out of five from me. If this does end up being... If, like, the first part of this four-part thing ends up being, like, ten to twelve episodes. Man, I, I'm hoping somewhere in here we get some goodness, right? Right? Is it going to be all sad until we get to the certain part where I left off at? I mean... A lot more effed up shit happens, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. A lot more effed up stuff happens. So we'll have to see until then. But please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Hit the like button. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be notified of more videos just like this one. You will definitely see Chainsaw Man later today. So as always, thank you for taking some time to listen to me talk about anime. Let me know. Legitimately, let me know if you would prefer if I did my Bleach reviews, like how I do my uh, Chainsaw Man reviews. Well, I just talk about the episode. I don't give you the play-by-play. -play. Well, I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy watching videos that do that. I do enjoy it. But if you guys would prefer something a little bit better, so you know, a little bit more succinct, feel free to let me know. My social medias are, once again, down in the description below. So hit me up on there. I would love to hear your opinion. <clears throat> so please... Wash your hands. Be good. Be blessed. Take care of yourselves, please. Be good to yourselves. Be good to others. Either way it goes, please don't be a jerk. Be safe out there, everybody. It is ridiculous. As always, remember that you are never alone. There's someone who would rather talk to you today than to miss you and mourn you tomorrow. I can guarantee it. I can promise it. And like I said... Anytime you want to talk to me, the social medias are right down there. Even if Twitter burns into nothing, you still got my you still got my Instagram. It's right there. It's right there. As always, guys, thank you once again. I appreciate each and every last one of you. Until next time, Bonkai. <laughs>